As Nigeria marks its 61st anniversary of independence, its citizens talk in general enemy of despondency. This is as a result of general insecurity in the country, rising unemployment and high costs of living. Nigeria's economy has been stagnant, growing at less than 1% cumulatively during the past six years, far below population growth of 2.6%. It also has about 40% of the population of about 200 million people living below the poverty line. However, the president in his Independence Day broadcast says the nation has recovered from economic recession in the fourth quarter of 2020, with a GDP growth rate of 0.11%, and grew by 0.51% and 5.01% in rule terms in the first and second quarters of this year. We will be analyzing the economic highlights of his broadcast. Happy Independence Day, Nigerians. Welcome to Business Insight on PLUS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. You're still watching Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Before we get into the analysis proper, the Niger Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NATI, Value Added Tax, VAT, for its scarcity, rounded up business headlines for this week. Take a look. The Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative says the indebtedness of 77 oil and gas companies to the federal government is now 2.66 trillion naira. Nate's Executive Secretary Oji Ubunaya Oji, who said this in Abuja while speaking on the status of 80 implementation in Nigeria, said the 77 firms carried out the operations across the country. Nate would publish fresh leases of indebted oil firms that would give anti-corruption agencies, including the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, to go after the defaulting organizations. The Corporate Affairs Commission says it has completed the incorporation of Nigerian National Petroleum Company in line with the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act. The Commission's Registrar General Gaba Abubakar confirmed the development in Abuja while speaking at the quarterly meeting of heads of agencies in the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. According to him, the registration was completed the same day after fulfilling all requirements set for the incorporation of the NMPC Limited. More than two months after the Central Bank of Nigeria stopped the sale of forex to its licensed bureau de change operators, workers in the sector are being laid off over scarcity of forex, findings have revealed. Operators in the sector have also estimated that their losses could hit 300 billion naira if the situation deteriorates further. To salvage the deteriorating situation, the operators are seeking other means of survival by seeking permission to get involved in the diaspora remittance business. The 2021 Annual Statistical Bulletin of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries released on Wednesday showed a drop of 543 million barrels in the crude oil reserves of Nigeria. Figures on world proven oil reserves by country as contained in the bulletin indicated that Nigeria's oil reserves dropped from 37,453 million barrels in 2016 to 36,910 million barrels in 2020. The federal government has repeatedly stated that it was making efforts to grow the country's oil reserves in a bid to increase Nigeria's revenue from crude sales. The Court of Appeal in Abuja has granted the request of the Lagos State Government to be joined in the suit challenging the collection of value-added tax of states. 
The Lagos State Government had in the suit sought to join the Rivers State Government in the appeal filed by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, against the judgment of the Federal High Court in Abuja, which empowered Rivers State to collect VAT and not the Federal Tax Authority. In the resumed hearing of the case on Thursday, the court also ordered all processes filed to be served on the Attorney General of Lagos State. The case was then adjourned to October 7, and will be heard at the appellate court in Port Harcourt. Fellow Nigerians, our unrelenting effort at resolving an almost two decades stolen on the management of our petroleum resources and ensuring equitable consideration to our host communities has resulted in the enactment of the Petroleum Industry Act 2021. This act not only overhauls the institutional, regulatory, and fiscal framework of the petroleum industry, but also reduces the previous opacity associated with this sector. This is a first step to the reform as the process is a continuous one. Already, to further improve the governance framework, I have sought for an amendment of Section 11, Subsection 2B, and Section 34, Subsection 2B. We also continue to review and amend as appropriate. At this juncture, it is very appropriate that I salute the leadership and members of the Ninth Assembly for their patriotism, dedication to duty, candor, and most importantly, the dispatch with which they have enacted legacy legislations for this nation. I do not take such a level of cooperation for granted and hope it continues for the overall efficiency. And those were just snippets of the president's broadcast uh, today, talking about um, the economy and, of course, other areas in the nation. Now, joining us to analyze the high point is Kate Palm. Uh, she is a business consultant and social entrepreneur. Many thanks for joining us today on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Kate. The third one. All right, yeah, you're welcome, Kate. Let's talk about um, the economy. Let's just uh, look at it um, holistically. Now, it's been 61 years uh, since Nigeria gained independence. Uh, some people would say a 61-year-old man is someone who should be full of uh, you know, enough wisdom. But if you were to analyze uh, from where we are coming from and where we are at right now, how would you just rate the economy generally? Well, uh, it's really difficult to place a specific rating on the economy right now because um, on the one hand, there are so many things, so many negatives to it when you just look at certain indicators like the current uh, exchange rate, for instance. Just at the beginning of this year, the dollar was at 360 and right now, we're looking at 580 thereabout. So when you look at some of all those short-term things, you might say, okay, the economy, uh, you, you would rate it very poorly. But then, then there are certain strides also that we have taken in the economy in terms of the way business is being done with the use of technology and so, so many other things. So I would say... We're not quite where we should be as a country in terms of the economy. We have taken some baby steps, but we're still far away from where we need to be. All right, uh, glad to know that. But let's just uh, talk specifically now concerning Nigeria's economy. The president addressed um, the nation uh, in the early hours of today, and uh, he specifically mentioned uh, refining, uh, the nation's refinery crude oil and all of that. And... Uh, specifically, he said uh, that uh, they will be exploring more of the modular refinery. Now, would you say that's um, 
a welcome development, judging by the fact that uh, we have not really uh, had it so smooth when it comes to uh, you know, crude oil and um, enough um, petroleum for the nations to consume. Thank you. Absolutely. The modular refining, the domestic uh, um, consumption of uh, uh, refined products, it's very crucial because, I mean, look at how much we're exporting the crude for and look at how much we're importing products at. So absolutely, if we have more refineries functioning, that would be extremely good for the economy. In fact, people, players in the oil and gas industry predict that just the Dangote refinery that is coming upstream will be a game changer for our economy. And so we're all looking forward to that. The idea behind modular refineries is that, you know, they're located close to where there's feedstock and also where there's a ready market. So once you're producing and the market there is absorbing, you're able to balance demand and supply. So that's likely to result in a, it would likely result in a drive in driving the price of uh, uh, petrol or, or crude products, petroleum products down. And also, I mean, it's serving the market, so uh, it's readily available and it will do well for the economy. Another aspect that he talked about is also the gas, the focus on gas. This decade has been declared a decade of gas. And so Nigeria has quite an abundance of gas. And so as we look at the energy transition and going to gas and other forms of energy, I think uh, energy is probably our highest cost of production All right, in the Kate, country. If I have to bolt in, you mentioned the, uh, you, you mentioned the issue of um, the president looking in the direction of gas. Even if I must play devil's advocate right now, I just made there. Because uh, we have, like you said, uh, gas, uh, uh, enormous gas, uh, you know, uh, bound here in the country. Yet Nigerians are grappling with the high costs, you know, of uh, LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. Would you really say that, uh, is it um, a thing of joy that um, we have this supply and yet we are seemingly wallowing and the president is saying that uh, we are going to explore more of that in the coming maybe days, months, or maybe years as it were. So how would you draw the line uh, of uh, having so much gas you know, in supply and yet uh, you, uh, your, rest, your, 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 your citizens, you know, are paying so much to get uh, you know, this particular gas in their homes? Well, you know, they say the best time to start was yesterday, but the next best time to start is right now, and it's better late than never, right? Yes, mm. we do have an abundance of gas, but you know, setting up the infrastructure is not a day's job. They have been talking about the, the AKK pipeline project for a number of years. These are huge infrastructural costs. They run into billions of dollars. And the issue with the gas is that the, why we have been exporting most of the gas that we have had is because there's the, because of the pipeline infrastructure. These things are highly flammable. There are environmental uh, risks that are associated with these kinds of um, investments. And so it's important to pay attention to all of all those things. Now, to the consumer, we're only looking at the price. And this uh, high price, God willing, with all, if the, the government, if the political will is there and the right measures are taken with the right public-private partnerships, gas should be something that should be readily available to the villages. So with that whole gas infrastructure thing beyond production and all that there's the marketing there's the sales there's even the awareness you know that in our rural areas people are not yet aware of the benefits of using lpg as opposed to firewood so there's a it, it requires all hands to be on deck and the recommendation from my end to people here would be everybody in nigeria should start considering being a gas Preneur at this point in time, there are opportunities there to see how how can we bring gas to our local uh, communities. How can gas get to my village? If we're all thinking all like right. that, uh, you know, we're producing more, then it will get to people, and uh, it, it will be available in time as the infrastructure is being put in place. 
All right, another thing that caught um, the president's um, attention uh, in his um, broadcast was um, that of um, food security and food uh, supply. You will agree with me that um, practically every day you go to the market, um, the, the prices of commodities are you know, just increasing by the day. Uh, I don't even know how much they sell uh, kilo, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> beans, rice, and stuff right now in the market. But the president uh, seemed to believe that um, the issue is that of um, the, the middlemen in the market. Do you agree? Uh, on this note, I beg to disagree with Mr. President. I think he's, uh, he's a bit out of touch with the reality of the people because the issue is not the middlemen. We all do know that when there is currency fluctuation, the currency risk that we face in this country is what drives the market, not the middlemen. We import everything, everything. So the the materials for the, the fertilizer, everything that is required in the agricultural value chain is imported. And so when there's a, uh, when there's a fluctuation in, in the currency and the value of the Naira drops, of the price of tomato in the market. So when you put, I don't think that the role that middlemen play is significant in saying that the entire agricultural uh, economy mm. affected by men. I don't think that that is correct. I think that not enough investment has been made in the agricultural sector. Not enough human capital have, has been developed in that sector. And of course, the, there's not enough exports we're still largely an importing nation, and that is the impact that we're feeling now, and not the middlemen. All right, now, fine. Let's look at other real um, other aspects of the economy, specifically the real sector. Let's talk about uh, manufacturing, for instance. Uh, uh, since uh, COVID-19, manufacturers generally have been lamenting, and they say uh, the economy, in as much as uh, we saw some sort of um, uh, minimal growth last year, but they are still lamenting. They complain about um, FX. They complain about, um, you know, import rate, and of course, um, you know, interest rate at the moment. So how would you say that we can get out of the waters in terms of getting our manufacturing sector to work you know, optimally? Well, in, in, in that sector, uh, as it is, uh, w again, it still boils down to actually the imports because a lot of weight is, is played because of the level of imports. And of course, the impact of the pandemic was in that sector because the entire supply chain network or the supply chain infrastructure was shaken by the pandemic. So when you, when you put all of all those things into consideration, you know that, first of all, it does require time the value chain, the entire manufacturing value chain, you, you did mention something about the rails, mm. rotation work and all of all those things that are affecting. You You produce the goods. How do you take them to the... Not only are we having the challenges of insufficient um, transport infrastructure, there's the security that is affecting people, you know, which is also affecting... which also um, has an impact on the agricultural sector as well. So let's, those to be dealt with need to be dealt with. People need to be safe to, be, to, to do what they need to do to support the economy. And then once all of all those things are put in place, I, I would commend the government in terms of the strides that they're making where, when it comes to the real infrastructure. But um, it's, it's happening you know, Nigeria does not need organic growth right now. We need something, we need radical change, quick changes that people will see and will be able to key into and run with. All I right. think that's the missing link. All right, uh, Kate, uh, just before we we'll let you go, let's just try and sum all of our thoughts. Uh, specifically, I want you to talk about um, the way forward in the nation's um, forex um, regime. You will agree with me that uh, the Naira is not really doing well in the international in the currency market. Uh, I know most Nigerians are lamenting, even the BDCs are also lamenting now, but would you say the, the Central Bank of Nigeria has uh, been moving in the right direction vis-a-vis uh, -vis the ban of um, BDCs and from sale of um, Forex as we round off? Well, 
to be honest, I think uh, in in the the steps that the central bank has taken are steps in the right direction because that has curbed to an extent or is expected to curb some of those uh, round tripping and black market transactions that are going on. I don't think, uh, but however, you know, as those measures are, be, are, are being taken, it's important to consider the impact on the vast majority of the people in a country where unemployment is about 40% at this point in time. So the multiplier effect, I think that it would have been done in such a way that the effect on the economy, on the common man, you know, that with some cushions, right? The immediate ban, people are struggling, even genuine businesses are struggling to assess for it for their businesses. And of course, that will have an impact on every other sector, the manufacturing sector that you talked about. All right, thank you so much. Um, indeed, we have been speaking with some Kate Pam. She is a business consultant and social entrepreneur, and she joined us uh, all the way from Abuja. Many thanks once again for sharing your thought and input with us on the show this evening. Thank you very much for having me. And happy Independence Day to you once again. Happy Independence Day to you too. All right. And that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching and see you again next time. Bye for now.